Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. Today, we're going to drive on the real estate data bus, take a look at some of the numbers that are happening in our market before I get to that. And we're going to talk about pricing as well. The Diamondbacks play tonight again at 5.03 versus the Texas Rangers. Interesting thing about that, I posted a survey on my community tab on YouTube here last week saying, how many of you think the Diamondbacks are going to make it to the World Series? And 55% of you said no. And so last night I posted one, how many of you think the Diamondbacks are going to win the World Series? And now 63% of you have said yes. <laughs> Nothing like a nine to one spank down the other night to uh, make people reconsider how how good the team's doing. It's pretty exciting for us here in Phoenix. We're going to be playing downtown. And uh, so the whole town's just going to be lit up and it's a lot of fun. And I remember when they won in 2001. So I hope we get a repeat. That was a kick uh, and running it out there. It says they should be up two to zero. Yeah, I agree. That, uh, that first one, gosh, they lost in the 11th inning and that guy just smacked it into the stratosphere. Now I'm not a baseball follower at all. Pat is. My gosh, that guy knows more about the Diamondbacks than you can imagine. So what's going on in our market here right now? Well, um, the central bank is going to be meeting again uh, this week and deciding whether or not they're going to raise rates. So you look at where rates are today, 7.88. They've gone up just a little tick. Um, that's your indication right there where the market thinks the Fed is going to move. So right now, 90% of them are saying, ah, they're going to stay put. Um, so I don't expect up or down. We have seen historically now, if they've gone up like 25 basis points that our rates, mortgage rates actually come down because they're anticipating it. So they're pricing ahead of, of what they're going to say. Good morning. And uh, so, you know, we'll watch and see what happens. But what's going on now is we are seeing, um, you know, our new listings are continuing to start to trickle down. I'm going to talk to you about the effect on pricing here in a couple more slides, but you can see here, these are our, the bottom line here is new contracts and this is new listings. Now, a lot of talk going on. We're getting a lot more listings, a lot more listings. We're not, we're just not selling what's there. We're down to where we're only putting 63% of the new listings under contract. It wasn't long ago back here when we were putting 84 to 90% of them under contract. So if you're not putting them under contract as they come on, then the number of homes available continues to grow. There are some realtors out there that think that more people are listing their house. Well, here's the chart, folks. That's not the case. Now, what's going to happen in the next couple of months? I went back a year here, same day last year. Here's Thanksgiving. I mean, this is getting close to November. New listings just tail off. Here's Thanksgiving week, fall off. They go up a little bit as you get closer to Christmas, and then they completely fall off the face of the earth. Going to be interesting to see just how much lower our sales number can be because we are at not just a low point, but a historic low point. Sales have never been this low. So what does that mean? Well, you take a look here. This is the average list price per square foot. This is where people are pricing their homes. Uh, they're starting to finally dip down a little bit. And um, you kind of have to dive into this a hair too, because you're, you're seeing a lot of price reductions. And what's rattling around in this little brain here is, are the prices being reduced from an unrealistic asking price? And I, I, that's my gut. Uh, when the market starts to turn, how do you price? So if the market's getting soft and there aren't a lot of buyers, should you be pricing? Should you be doing, and tell me in the comments how you comp your house. If you got a home listed, tell me how you arrived at your price. I'd like to, I'd like to hear that. I'm not going to argue with it. I just like to hear it. But if, if the market's starting to soften a little bit, it's not to your advantage to try and be above that, to be above where the market is, because there's just not that many people out there looking. And folks, buyers want bargains now. They're not in the mood. I mean, they're on strike. So um, unless you're the bell of the ball, uh, they're going to pass you by. Now, homes are still selling. Uh, they're still selling in certain price ranges and certain zip codes. But you can see here that the average list price per square foot is finally starting to come down, but not by much, $2 a square foot. 
Here's the list price versus sales price. So you can see that the list price was 287 and sales price is 280. So only, I think, 90%, I mean, 90% of people are still getting their list price, but uh, that's that's slowing down. And, it, and when I say that, keep in mind, those contracts were written 30 to 45 days ago. So that, so that lags. Active listings, here we go. This is where the confusion comes, and especially among uh, other realtors. Sorry, folks, but um, listings are climbing, but they're only climbing because the water's not draining out of the bathtub as fast as it used to. As you saw by the seven-day moving average, more people are not listing their homes. The people that are listing their homes are finding out that they're not flying off the shelf like they used to, so this is continuing to climb. Now, the Cromford Market comes out and makes a comment that says that, uh, you know, we're climbing at a faster rate than 2005. And that is true, but not for the same reasons. 2005, more people were starting to put their homes on the market. And uh, th it's not the case today. So it's going to go up, but look here. You're going to see it start to go down just like it went down last year, the year before, as we get closer and closer to the holidays. And unfortunately, if you're a, uh, if you're a seller, you're going to see less competition coming into November, December, but then you're going to see fewer and fewer buyers. We're down to 2,200 every seven days now. We'll get down to probably 1,900. I mean, do the math. <laughs> There's not going to be very many people driving around uh, looking for homes. So as mortgage rates remain knocking on 8%'s door, uh, this is going to be a challenge for sellers. But, uh, but don't be too bleak about it because, like I say, homes are selling. I'm going to show you a chart here on what's going on in a moment on uh, nationally with uh, home prices year to date. And here is the chart that I really like to pay attention to. And this is the demand index. And right here, see how they cross? See how the inventory went higher than demand? That was last year. And that's when we started to see prices come down. This is when we had that interest rate shock. Everybody started listing their homes right here. Mostly I buyers panicking, running for the hills. And then the demand fell down. That's when rates went from 3.5 to 7 in the New York minute. So what's going on today? Well, they're not uh, not touching yet, folks. So demand is coming down. Inventory is starting to come up. So there isn't a lot of downward pricing pressure yet, but I believe it's coming just based on the data that we're looking at as we get into January and February. There's no indication out there that rates are going to be more favorable. And uh, as we wait for that right now, I mean, on affordability is at uh, an all-time high. So we're kind of stuck. And, and it could be this way for a while. I'll let other people guess when it's going to end. But here's closings per month above list price. That party's over, friends. We're down to 20%. Remember when we were at here? 60% of homes are closing above list price. It's only 20% now, and the amount of contributions towards closing costs from sellers is approaching 50%. That's an interesting, interesting number. Here is the Mortgage Bankers Association Housing Wire Index. Take a look at this. This is 2020 when they told us all to stay home. I thought real estate was doomed. And nobody was going to be buying a house. And I was right because there was a couple of weeks there where they were not even applying for a loan. But we have certainly broken that record. I mean, this was just about as bleak as you could get. You know, everybody's saying, I can't even go to an open house. Everything's terrible. Why am I going to apply for a loan? Lo and behold, the government says, hey, wait, we have some money for you. And the mortgage applications went up like crazy. So we are, this is an indication of just how slow we are. Smack, smack, sports show. Still been busy down here in Santan Valley. New home sales, price point to $340, $450. They have the incentives to get people down there. Uh, they have the incentives along with buying down your interest rate. I mean, they're giving away the farm down there. Then you have to say, okay, what's the home really worth? If I bought a brand new home and I paid Four fifty for it, but they gave me thirty thousand dollars in incentives and rate buy downs. What's the real value of the home if I were to turn around and sell it? 
because you wouldn't have those incentives. So that's some simple math to keep in mind. Um, but if you're in there for the long term, I'm sorry, who cares? Uh, so condo was supposed to close today. My file is pending with Fannie Mae as to being warrantable. Oh my gosh. I thought we had that solved, Sean. For those that don't know, if you're selling condos, they have to be warrantable. In other words, they have to show that they kept up with deferred maintenance. And uh, Fannie Mae is, um, they're trying to figure all this stuff out. Sean sounds like he's stuck in the middle here. Here you are, down to the last wire. There's somebody trying to move in there. They probably already booked the moving truck. They got everything all packed up, ready to go. And they're waiting for a government agency to make it warrantable. Boy, that's that's got to, you're going to start drinking early today, aren't you, Sean? Actually, it's more of a problem for them than than you right now. I mean, closing on time would be great, but, you know, taking a look at uh, the poor people that have to move, that's where it really gets sticky. Here is that percent of national single family listings with price decreases. Last year, people had to decrease them like crazy because it came in too hot. Remember, as soon as the rates went up, people thought, well, I think my house is worth 750 so I'm going to get it. Oh, crud, I couldn't get it. So price decreases are showing up again. And then we see here, single family, new listings. Again, this is national. See, the number of new listings is not, not going up. So it's staying down. Here's the interesting chart I wanted to show you right here. This is Phoenix. Month over month, 0.3% price increase. Year to date, up 1.9. Year over year, down 4.2 down from the peak that we saw in 2022, down 8.5. And over here, look at this, since March of 2020, up 48.4%. Change since the housing crash, crash bottom, which was things crashed in 2008. They kind of hit the bottom in pricing like 2009 and 10. We are up 242.3%. So the people that were able to get financing back then cleaned up my friends and uh that was the key as people even now wait for the crash you have to ask if there is will there be financing available to you so and if you're waiting for prices to come down are you taking the steps to make sure that you're credit worthy so that you'll be able to take advantage if we see prices come down quickly that's uh, very important because you can Unfortunately, a lot of people have given up and said, well, I'm out, um, sign another lease for a year and, oh, what the heck, I'll go ahead and buy that car. And uh, what we're seeing is people taking on car payments from $500 to $800 a month and just drawing a complete blank as far as getting a house. So they're giving up. Not everybody, but there's enough of a percentage to where like, heck with it, uh, rent is cheaper than buying right now. So I'm under rent. Can't blame them. And, uh, but I don't think I'd throw in the towel long term. So I think if you're sitting there and you're saying, well, rent's cheaper, well, then take advantage of it. Rent isn't really cheaper per month. Now. I don't want to give that impression. It's just cheaper than buying. Rent's only gone down a couple pennies. Uh, that's going to change just because we're seeing more and more apartment complexes being built. But look, if rent goes down in your area and you're able to save some money, then do that. Save some money. Um, Take advantage of the lower rent. Don't go out and take on a lot of credit card debt because you've already got beat up by inflation. Even if you're just staying put right now, your groceries higher, your gas is higher. I can't believe going to the grocery store. I just get burned. But uh, here's Smack Sports Show here says, new apartments down the street from my builder, three bedroom, two bath, 1100 square feet, 2400 for a three bedroom. Our smallest floor plan payment goes for about the same at 1,400 square feet with builder incentives. So Santan, that's an outlying area. Uh, there are some, same with uh, Maricopa. So they're probably smacking the rent price pretty good. Thank you for sharing that. There is a huge, huge build the rent being developed down in Queen Creek by the Mormon church. I guess they're, you know, they're one of the largest landholders down here. I did not know that. I read that on a I think it's Phoenix Business Journal over the weekend. And they're building one of those huge build to rent communities. And uh, those are for people that don't want to have neighbors up above them or down below them, but you're going to have them next door. You're living kind of in a house. It's a small house. 
um, they're filling them up. You look at them and you go, Ooh, gosh, it kind of looks like, um, military housing <laughs> only better, but they're filling them. They're getting people in there. So that, uh, you're going to see more and more of those spring up and, uh, they're popular simply because they're not apartments and especially with people that have pets, they have parks in there. Some of them have swimming pools, a uh, real sense of community. So it's one of those things where, you know, find a niche and find a need and then fill it. And these, these people did. So we're going to look ahead for Wednesday and see what the central bank does. I think it's going to be a big, uh, nothing burger. I don't think they're going to raise rates. I don't think they're going to lower rates. The market's already done that for them. Now, the bond market is, unfortunately, we may see rates go up even further again just because of the amount of treasuries that we have to sell to finance the debt. The interest payments on the debt now are approaching and about to exceed national defense. So that's getting expensive. So there's a huge deficit in our country because of this ridiculous spending they're spending way too much money. We're getting $4 trillion in receipts and we're spending six. Try that at home, folks. It doesn't last too long. I'm a little ticked off about it because it's hurting everything. And when you spend that kind of money, you have to finance it. How do you finance it? Well, you sell treasury bills. How do you attract buyers? You have to give incentives like a higher rate of return. Would you like to buy this treasury bill? Oh, you wouldn't? Well, how about if, so when the rate gets bid up, when the rate gets bid up, the 10-year treasury starts to climb, interest rates go up. And that's what we're seeing. So the central bank now can sit back and go, okay, I don't think we need to raise rates because the treasury market is doing that for us. Here, uh, Terry says, people with 2.5% interest rates still have trouble with payments. When they bought, they still maxed out their DTI, 45%. Some people did. We'll see what happens. Uh, Smack here says, thank you, Rick, for your time. I watch every time I get a chance. You keep me updated on the market. Thanks for tuning in. Keep us up to date on what's going down there in Santan and go Diamondbacks. I hope you're all watching the game tonight. I like the new format where the games actually go faster. Otherwise, it's like watching paint dry sometimes. But this has been exciting. I love it. Phoenix um, puts on a good show downtown for the world series if you happen to be down there just go down by the ballpark and and take a look at it now do any of you work in the food industry down there because i have a question for you you know that the world series is in phoenix tonight and you've known that since last week so you get to order the supplies your fresh meat because you know you're going to be busy downtown so you know that and you know the games are tomorrow night so you've ordered it and it's coming and you know you're going to be busy now it's a guessing game after that, because as soon as somebody wins four games, it's over, right? So you're ordering all this food. And if you get down to like last week, you had a game seven, and you didn't know who was going to win or a game six. You didn't even know if there's going to be a game seven, but you think there's going to be a game seven and you've already stocked your restaurant with all the food because you, all the fresh supplies, because you know, everybody's going to be coming and then they lose and there isn't a game seven. There went your food cost. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. And uh, it's kind of like when I was in the bread business, you'd order the bread four days ahead of time, you know, and uh, in, in the Seattle area, when you get snow, people run to the grocery store. Well, sometimes you don't know it's going to snow four days ahead of time. So all the managers would be yelling at you. I remember there was a guy at Albertsons one just chewing me out, assistant manager. You should have known it was going to snow. And he's just ripping me a new one. I'm, I'm like this 29-year-old kid just going, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, uh, uh, who orders the milk? He goes, I do. I said, well, you're out of milk. <laughs> and then I just walked on. So anyway, a little funny backstory, go Diamondbacks. Everybody have a great Monday and take on the rest of the week. Take care.